Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. I do want to encourage you to check out our other podcast, and today I am highlighting the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon at snackwagon.net. It's our newest podcast, about a year old, where we serve up snack-sized bits of old-time radio from either short standalone programs or from excerpts of longer programs. There's a bit of comedy, music, drama, and unique and interesting shows that many old-time radio fans haven't even heard of. So check it out, snackwagon.net. Our new season starts on Labor Day, but in the meantime, we have nearly 50 episodes posted for your listening pleasure, and again, that's at snackwagon.net. Well, last week we played the last available 1945 episode of Bulldog Drummond. This week, the first, last, and only available 1946 episode of Bulldog Drummond. The original air date on this one is October the 14th, 1946. And this episode is often listed as Murder in the Ring. Uh, There are other titles as well, but the actual title given in the episode is The Case of the Fatal Right. So let's go ahead and listen, and then we'll come back. Suggestion for acid indigestion. T U M S Tums. And now here is Bulldog Drummond tell you about his newest adventure. Civilizations changed, perhaps, but the fundamental patterns remain. The patterns of life and death, and the games of life and death. In Rome, it was gladiators, armed with net and spear, who fought in the arena until one or the other died. In medieval times, there were knights with lance on sword, who fought on horseback. Today we have our counterpart of those games of death, prize fighting. Two men in a roped square, but the fight is usually not to the death, only until one man has rendered another helpless. But sometimes the game has the older and deadlier issue, and a man dies in front of screaming thousands. 
Denny and I had often been spectators at prize fights. But on one occasion, we became much more than spectators. We became actors in the drama. It all began late one evening with Denny and me at home. Uh, Denny. Uh, Yes, sir? What on earth are you doing? Uh, Reading, sir. Is that why you're trying to stand on your head? Uh, Well, sir, it's a rather difficult book to understand. Oh? Uh, Frankly, I haven't been able to follow it with what I already have in my head, so I thought if I could get more blood into it... Denny, you'll get apoplexy. Oh, you think so? Oh, then perhaps I'd better try another book, uh, an easier one. I Try uh, answering the door, Denny. If it's anyone interesting, you may not have to read at all. Oh, I don't mind reading, sir. It's figuring out what it means that I... Denny. Uh, Yes, I'll get it, sir. Maybe someone asking me to subscribe to the Book of the Year Club, sir. Book of the Month, Denny. Uh, Read a book every month? Oh, that's fantastic, sir. I... Yes, who... Come on, quick, close the door. Uh, oh, well, close it, I tell you. Uh, oh, of course. I... The window, get the shade down. Uh, yes, right away. Yeah, that's that's a little better. It's a little more confined, perhaps, but uh, my name uh, is Drummond. Uh, Vincent, Joe Vincent. How do you do, Mr. Vincent? So far, not too bad. After that, who can tell? I'm not quite sure I understand. Oh, he must be an author. I got a feeling I'm on a spot, Captain Drummond. That's why I came here. Go on. You see, I got a boy, Tarzan. Tarzan? Yeah, one of the lousiest middleweights that ever fouled up a ring. Oh, I see. You're a prize fight manager. Mm Mm-hmm. And your fighter's name is Tarzan. Yeah. And he's not very good. And that's what I said. Well, there's nothing I can do about his ability or lack of it. Then maybe you could explain to me why the big gamblers are putting all their dough on my boy. He's fighting someone? Tomorrow night at the Acme Arena. He's meeting Asawi Bill. An Indian? Strictly from Brooklyn. But a good box fighter. And despite that, the gamblers are betting on Tarzan. That's what's got me scared. I can't figure it. I'm betting on a sorry bill myself. Oh, is that quite loyal? It's practical, Captain Drummond. Otherwise, me and Tarzan wouldn't eat. I see. Uh, you don't see the half of it, Captain Drummond. On account of you don't know Mr. Burton. Uh, no, I don't. Who is he? Mr. Burton is a nice, quiet guy who don't look like he'd harm a fly. And? He wouldn't harm a fly. Well... But I ain't no fly. Mr. Burton is head of this here gambling outfit I'm telling you about. They're all planting their dough on Tarzan. Now, supposing Tarzan don't win tomorrow night, then they are likely to be planting Tarzan, not to mention me. Yes, but surely Burton wouldn't blame you or your fighter if he lost fairly. Mr. Burton ain't the type guy interested in what's fair. He likes to win bets. So do the boys he bosses, see? Yes, well, I appreciate your dilemma, but I can't see that there's anything for me to do. You could be interested. Perhaps, but... And uh, I could kind of spread it around that you was interested in in my health and Tarzan's. I'm not a physician. If Mr. Burton gets mad, me and Tarzan wouldn't need no physician. We'd be using the same undertaker. Well, suppose we say that um, Denny and I are interested in the fight. Here's a couple of tickets. Thank you. We'll be at the fight. Swell. I'm not sure how much of a protection that'll be for you. I ain't either, Captain Drummer, but it'll be something. And even if I get killed... Yes? I'll still appreciate it. Yeah, quite a crowd, sir. Yes, Denny. I hardly think... Oh, um, Tarzan's dressing room should be right down this corridor here. Uh, We're going to visit him before the fight? Vincent asked me to drop in. Oh, and cheer Tarzan up. Well, from the newspaper photographs I've seen of Tarzan, I doubt it. I doubt whether Tarzan has any emotions. Well, I don't know, sir. He looks almost human. Almost. This is the door. Quiet, the transom's open. Tarzan, don't be no jerk. Mr. Vincent. Yes. We got all our dough riding on a sorry bill. Joe, I've been thinking. With what? What's going to happen to my career if I keep on getting laid in the rising all the time? You should have thunk of that before giving up your truck. Joe. I saw we Bill's been making a spacious, see? About you, personal or professional? About I think, see? But when I get in that ring tonight, I'm going to knock his ears off. Tarzan, Tarzan, listen to me. First, if you hit him, he's going to get mad at you, and maybe he'll kill you. Second, if there is a miracle and you lay him away, we lose all our dough. Tarzan, we can't take no chance. you got to make sure and dive for him. I don't dive tonight. Don't answer me too quick. Think, think, will you? You know what's happening to the price of steak, don't you? That's not quite cricket, Mr. Vincent's suggestion, is it? Not only that, Denny, it's dangerous as well. The gambling ring is betting on Tarzan, and if he should throw the fight too obviously... That must be the end of the preliminary bout. We may as well go to our seats. And not visit with Tarzan? No, no, we'll let him think. I don't envy him. 
He's in a rather difficult spot. If the sow we build doesn't kill him inside the ring, Mr. Burton is likely to kill him outside. Uh, splendid seats we have, sir. Ringside, Denny? Yes, quite. Tarzan looks a little nervous. And not half as nervous as Vincent, sir. No, whereas the sow we build... A revolting specimen, sir. Uh, quite muscular, however. Quite. Mm, the fight should start at any moment now. The men have received their instructions from the referee, and they're returning to their corners. Yeah, clever of them to remember, considering their lack of brow. They've turned now. Seconds are out of the ring. Well, imagine. The Tarson seems to think he's in a race. Look at him running. The crowd doesn't like it either. Of course, that may be Tarzan's strategy. But he'll never win the fight running away. He may not win the fight, Denny, but he may save his life. Oh, look. Also, we Bill's just drifted. Again and again. Good heavens, sir. Tarzan is being mangled. Yes, yes, he should keep on running. Why doesn't he fight back? Uh, don't look now, sir, but Tarzan just threw a punch at us, so he... Uh, a rather feeble one, but good heavens, sir. He, he's knocked off so we build down. With what, Denny? That blow scarcely reached us, are we? It was weak. I wonder... Tarzan's knocked him out, sir. Apparently. Come along, Denny. I want a word with Vincent. But he's in the ring with Tarzan. Yes, yes, I know. Here we are. Oh, uh, Vincent. Oh, yeah, yeah, Drummond. Hey, did you see what I seen? What did you see? Thompson putting a slug on us, are we knocking him out? I saw that, but I'm not sure I believe it. Confidential, neither do I. Hey, Thompson. Hey, I, hey, I knocked him out. Maybe I can't watch fight for real. Huh? With one punch, I laid him on a canvas. He ain't even got up yet. So I see. I think I'd better take a look. Well, Sowie's still unconscious, isn't he? Yes, Denny. I'm likely to remain so. Uh, you mean, uh, for a long time? I mean forever. Sawi Bill is dead. Our story continues in just a moment. But first... You know, Ken, the wife's making jelly. Say, that's good. But I sample every glass full. Say, that's bad. But then I take Tums. Say, that's good. Yes, when your eyes are bigger than your stomach, taking Tums is good because acid indigestion is bad. You see, Tums are the modern way for relief from acid distress. Tums are fast. Tums are convenient. Tums are effective. Fast because Tums dissolve in the mouth almost instantly like candy mint. Get after acid upset in a matter of seconds. Convenient because Tums need no mixing, no stirring, no water at all. Effective because Tums are a carminative antacid. And only a carminative antacid can both soothe and dispel acid distress. And never a chance of acid rebound with Tums ever. Yes, Tums are fast, Tums are convenient, Tums are dependable. So do as millions do. Next time you pick up your change, pick up a roll of Tums. Your druggist keeps them handy because so many of his customers reach for them. Tums for the tummy. Still only ten cents. The one-word suggestion for acid indigestion. T-U-M-S, Tums. Now back to the case of the fatal right. Captain Drummond and Denny had attended the prize fight between Tarzan and Asawi Bill, a fight in which Asawi Bill was the favorite. But Tarzan won the fight. He knocked Asawi Bill out. And when Drummond, climbing into the ring, took one good look at Asawi, he remarked to Denny, He's dead, Denny. Dead, dead, sir? Hey, what's going on? Why don't Asawi get up? He can't get up, Tarzan. He's dead. He... Hey, you mean on account of I knocked him out? Gee, I don't even know my own strength. I'm afraid that's not it, Tarzan. Sawi Bill didn't die as the result of a blow. Then what was it? Take a deep breath, Tarzan. I can take it straight. I. Hey, you mean that funny smell? Yes. Why, good heaven, sir, it's the odor of almonds. That's right, Denny, the odor of almonds. Almonds is nuts. True, 
but it's also the odor of hydrocyanic acid. Well, that's cyanide, poison. Yeah, but why you'd have saw we'd be drinking that kind of stuff? He, he didn't drink it. You notice the smudge around his nose and mouth where you hit him? You mean where, well, like it was dusty? Yes. And that dust, unless I'm grossly mistaken, is powdered hydrocyanic acid. Asawi must have inhaled enough of it to kill him. Can you imagine that? But, Captain Drummond, how did the powder get on his face? Tarzan's boxing gloves, Denny. Uh, I want Vincent. Where's Joe? Uh, I noticed him leave rather hurriedly a few minutes ago. He, he took a powder. Tarzan, I'm afraid the police are going to be more interested in the powder Asawi Bill took. And that means interested in you. Tarzan. He looked so pathetic when they arrested him. On the evidence the police had, there was no alternative for them. But you don't think he's guilty, do you? What makes you think that, Denny? Well, sir, we wouldn't have dashed out and taken this taxi if we did, would we? Right, Denny. No, I'm not at all sure of Tarzan's guilt. But what does the elite pool room have to do with it? Our destination? Burton's gambling pays off there. Oh, I see. I'm curious about the winners, the people who bet on Tarzan. Because they're the people who had a motive for wanting Asawi to die. Some of them, most of them, will turn out to be people who like to bet on the outsider. But one of them, Denny, will be a murderer. Uh, rather an elegant place, sir, this pool room. Large. I wonder... Oh, yes, yes, it would be down this end. But there are no tables here. No tables, but an office. Yes, someone just came out, counting money. Lucky fellow, he must have won. No one we know, however. However, if we wait at the side here, perhaps... Captain Drummond. Yes, I see, Vincent. But he can't have won. He told us he bet on a sorry. So he did. Hello, Vincent. What the... Oh, huh. Captain Drummond. Yes. Kind of a surprise seeing you here. I might say the same. Hey, you mean on account of... Well, Mr. Burton ain't mad at me. Tarzan won. True, but what were you doing with the money I saw in your hand? Oh, uh... Because if you bet on Asawi, you'd have lost. So I didn't bet on Asawi. So I bet on Tarzan. So what? Asawi was murdered. Had you bet on him, you'd have been in the clear. I'm in the clear anyway. You have a motive... Look, Charman, maybe I got a motive, but I didn't rub no cyanide on a sawy smeller, see? You wouldn't have had to. All you would have had to do was rub the powder on Tarzan's gloves. Did he say I'd done it? No, but perhaps he didn't realize it. That ain't no proof of nothing. I'm in a class, see? Nevertheless... Maybe he got a warrant to hold me, huh? Vincent, if I was sure that you were guilty, I wouldn't need a warrant. Oh, yeah, that's only your opinion, see? And I don't have to take nothing from nobody, see? Why are you shouting? Fear? Conscience? Never mind, I get... Can I be of any help? Mr. Burton. Good evening, Vincent. And... Denny there. I'm Captain Drummond. Delighted. You were saying, Vincent... I was saying I'm getting out of here. Quick. Rather upset, poor chap. I've seen you before, Mr. Burton. Me? Yes, you were a with Bill's second tonight at the fight. True. It amuses me on occasion to act as handler. But you didn't bet on him. You're well informed. Vincent? Vincent. Talkative. Not quite enough, however. How does it happen, Mr. Burton, that you bet on a fighter not your own? Shall we call it whimsy? Asawi Bill was the better fighter. That made the odds attractive. It also made Vincent's life valueless if Tarzan lost. True. But Tarzan won. Vincent delivered. Vincent, as you say, delivered. Splendid. Denny can testify to your statement. Indeed. Where? At the murder trial? Oh. Tarzan's? Perhaps. Perhaps Vincent's. Hmm. Perhaps we can discuss this further. I intend to, but not with you, with Vincent. I could make it more interesting financially. I happen to be interested in justice. Stuffy on your part, isn't it? Perhaps. Still, that stuffiness may keep one man out of the electric chair. In Tarzan's case, a debatable game for society. And put another man in it. Uh, this is the button for Vincent's apartment, isn't it? It is. But Mr. Vincent is evidently not at home. Uh, do you think he's uh, 
taken it on the lamb, sir? I doubt it, Denny. There was no evidence against him. Oh, he's in after all. Apartment 1B should be right along here. I wonder why he hesitated so long about answering. Perhaps he was in his bath, or... Here we are, 1B. Now to... <laughs> Denny. Denny, that gun was fired inside the apartment. The door... Uh, so we're not going in. Of course we are. Whoever was being shot at, it wasn't us. Oh, oh Captain Drummond. Uh, they, are, they are behind the desk. Yes, Vincent. Oh, look. He, he put a bullet in his brain, sir. So it would seem. Revolver in his right hand. Careful, Denny. I'll take it. Now then, under this lamp. Strong enough light, I should think, if I can get the right angle. Yes. Notice the fingerprints, Denny? Oh, yes, sir. One set clearly marked. Yes, and certainly Vincent's. Therefore? Therefore, the back entrance. Off the kitchen, probably. Oh, good heavens, sir. How could you deduce a back entrance from his fingerprints? Well, Denny, his fingerprints, plus the fact that we got in here, proves that he was murdered. Oh, well, we knew that all along. A uh, uh, murder? But he committed suicide. What we were supposed to think, Denny. That he killed Asawi and then committed suicide when he thought we were catching up with him. But, Denny, if he were about to kill himself, why should he have answered the doorbell? Uh, oh, oh. Uh, but why did he kill her? To make sure someone would hear the shot and find the still warm body, thereby confirming a suicide theory. But the clear fingerprints ruin that, Denny. A suicide never just grasps the gun and fires. He can't. He has to fumble with it, to aim it properly, to nerve himself to the act. Therefore, his fingerprints, although identifiable, would always be smudged. Now, what happened here, evidently, was that someone shot Vincent, wiped his own prints clean, and then pressed the gun into Vincent's hand. Yeah, nasty bit of work, sir. Well, Vincent's dishonesty, his willingness to win money by deceit and throwing fights was rather nasty, too. Turnabout, I suppose, is fair play. Hello. Good heavens, Denny. Did you hear what I said? Oh, quite, sir. I had my hearing tested only last week, and the doctor said now, that Now, never I... mind what the doctor said. Denny... I have just discovered who killed Asawi Bill. It wasn't Vincent? Obviously not. It was the same person who killed Vincent. Oh? But I rather doubt whether we'll be able to prove Vincent's murder. Our murderer unquestionably relied on an unshakable alibi in this instance. In the murder of Asawi, however, he relied on an undetectable method. Uh, which you detected, sir. Unconsciously, Denny. And something I said without thinking. Uh, you don't mind repeating what it was? Certainly not. The key sentence was... Turn about is fair play. Yes, so it is. I mean, uh, oh, really, sir? Yes, Denny, yes. Something in that sentence is going to deliver a murderer to justice. Splendid, sir. Because, you see, everyone thinks that the only people who could have put the cyanide powder on Tarzan's gloves were either Tarzan himself or Vincent. Well, isn't that true? No. Because, oddly enough, the person who put the cyanide on Tarzan's gloves was a corpse. <laughs> Back to the exciting climax of our story in just a moment. <laughs> They're preparing for a free Halloween party over at the King's house, and everybody's having fun except Charlie. Yeah, you can talk, all right. You don't have acid indigestion like I do. Feels like my insides are in more of a turmoil than that pumpkin's over there. Well, Tums can help you there. <laughs> Tums, you say? Yes, Tums. The one-word suggestion for acid indigestion. When acid indigestion has you feeling punk as a pumpkin, Tums can help you feel candle bright and in a jiffy. Tums are fast because they melt in the mouth like candy mints. Tums start after that upset, ready to neutralize excess acidity in jig time. No mixing, no stirring, no waiting. You don't even need water. Yes, in a matter of seconds, Tums soothes heartburn, calms those jitters, starts you on the road toward feeling yourself again. Tums, you know, are a carminative antacid. And a carminative antacid both soothes and dispels the upset. Still only ten cents a roll, all druggets. Tums for the tummy. The one-word suggestion for acid indigestion. T-U-M-S, Tums. One 
death followed by another. A sawy bill killed in the ring. Joe Vincent apparently shot by his own hand. But Drummond knows that Vincent was murdered and that the man who murdered him is the same man who killed a sawy bill. And now on their way to the pool room, Denny asks Captain Drummond. But Captain Drummond, if you say a corpse put the cyanide powder on Tarzan's gloves, why are we returning to the elite pool room? They don't keep corpses there. Uh, no, Denny. Besides, sir, you can't arrest a corpse for murder. True. But then the corpse wasn't guilty. Oh, that's nice, sir. And, and, uh, oh, it wasn't? It wasn't. Uh, uh, the pool room's still open. It would have to be. Hmm. Not many people here. As a matter of fact, only... Oh, yes, Mr. Burton and... And a couple of witnesses. I beg your pardon. Never mind, Eddie. Good evening, Mr. Burton. Oh, good evening. Just a moment till I finish this. In the side pocket. Now then, Captain. Uh, this should be rather private. Oh, well, my office then. Gentlemen, will you excuse me? This way, if you please. Been playing long? All evening. Of course. Those friends of yours would testify to that, wouldn't they? If necessary. Go right in. Thank you. I rather think it's going to be necessary. Indeed. The police will want to know where you were at the time Mr. Vincent died. Nonsense. Mr. Vincent committed suicide. And you knew that? How? I'm afraid, Captain Drummond, that our conversation is at an end. Not quite. Murder is an ugly word, Mr. Burton. It's an even uglier deed. Mr. Vincent was not murdered. I'm not talking about him. Or so we bill. Or so we bill. Well, I admit I earned quite a tidy sum when he lost the fight. I'll even admit that it supplies me with a pleasant motive for his murder. But Captain Drummond, the hydrocyanic acid powder was on Tarzan's gloves. I was never near those gloves. That can be proved. Of course it can. But that is not an alibi. It seems like a wonderful one to me. Yes, so long as we don't mention the old saying, turn about as fair play. Let's not bother with old sayings. Oh, but we must. Since that particular one is going to convict you of murder, Mr. Burton. I fail to see how. Everyone has assumed that because there was cyanide powder on Ossoe Bill's mouth and nose, the powder got there from Tarzan's gloves. But, Mr. Burton, remembering the turnabout saying, we come to another possibility. The powder got onto Tarzan's gloves because it was already on Ossoe Bill's face. And when you wiped his face between the third and fourth rounds, you smeared the powder on it. A theory. The towel you used. I dumped it in... All right, Drummond, you called it. Good. And now, if you'll permit, I'll call the police. I... Oh, dear. That's a revolver you're pointing at me. Your perceptions do you credit. I'm rather surprised, Drummond, about one thing. Knowing as you did that I am a murderer. Paraphrase another old saying. Why did you walk into my office? I needed your confessions, but surely you must have realized that I would take steps. But not very many. Listen. Yeah, nothing. Precisely. Why not? Weren't there two of your thugs out there, not to mention Denny? They... They're not talking or playing at the moment. I'm sure they're not. You see, Denny had casually picked up a billiard cue when I walked in here with you. I rather suspect he used it on your friends. You're guessing? Why not take a look? Oh, no, no. I prefer to play it safe. There's another way out of this office. I know there is. Hmm? Because someone is coming into the office at this very moment through that entrance. Well, it's impossible. I don't see... You it. shouldn't have looked. Let go. I think not. No. Drop that gun if you I'll please. I'll kill you. What? Excuse me, but your chin is showing. Oh. Denny? Yes, sir? You can come in now. Oh, well, here I am, sir. Oh, dear. Is that Mr. Burton on the floor? Yes. He turned his head at the wrong moment. What a coincidence. Mr. Burton's two friends are also lying down. The cue, Denny? I'm afraid so, sir. Splendid work. Thank you, sir. But I had to swing rather hard. You know, I have a feeling that the cue will never be the same. Well, if it comes to that, once the police arrive, I rather suspect Mr. Burton and his associates will never be the same either. <laughs> Bulldog Drummond will be back in a moment to tell you about next week's story. But first, 
The Adventures of Bulldog Drummond are brought to you every week at this time by Tums and Nature's Remedy, NR tablets. If you feel all in when you should feel all right, if nagging sick headache, fatigue, nervousness have you feeling down at the mouth, that may be Nature's way of saying you need a laxative. Try Nature's Remedy, NR tablets, a dependable laxative. Remember these four important yeses about Nature's Remedy. All vegetable? Yes. Time-tested? Yes. Dependable? Yes. Economical? Yes. 25 tablets, only 25 cents. Caution, take only as directed. NR, Nature's Remedy. NR tonight, tomorrow, all right. Here is Bulldog Drummond to tell us about next week's story. In these critical times of meat shortage, a cattle thief is more reprehensible than ever. Denny and I come up against the old western rustling problem, but more difficult to solve and more heinous because of modern methods employed. Slaughtering meat is one thing and saves human lives, but slaughtering humans is a different story. A story I call Thunder on the Range. Be sure to listen, won't you? And so into the night walks Bulldog Drummond, seeking new adventure and excitement. Join us next week at the same time when we will bring you Bulldog Drummond, starring Ned Weaver, and another thrilling story. Mutual's Mystery Hour continues immediately after station identification with the casebook of Gregory Hood. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, first of all, it's always nice to have a sponsor that's still actually around and uh, Tom's definitely is. And it was nice to hear how it was sold nearly 70 years ago. I do wonder whether Jackson Beck had a deal with Bulldog Drummond that he would only appear in the series in episodes where he played two roles, as he not only plays the boxer, but he also plays the uh, murderer. I was a little bit surprised that Bulldog Drummond and Denny were actually willing to help the fight manager in the first place. Uh, Most of the detectives we hear are a lot more outraged at the idea of fixing a prize fight. But they pretty much go along with him at the beginning with no moral objection to his face, but acknowledging... Uh, to themselves that it wasn't cricket. But I think most detectives we heard would have probably tossed the fight manager out on his ear. Now, it was interesting to hear the tease for the casebook of Gregory Hood, which is a series we played so many years back, but which I really fondly enjoyed. And we do actually have the Gregory Hood episode that was teased. I've often thought it might be fun to do a special where we play two episodes that aired back-to-back. We don't have all that many. For example, uh, there are very few Casebook of Gregory Hood episodes in circulation at all. And as I said at the start of this podcast, this is the only Bulldog Drummond episode we have for all of 1946. All right, well, listen our comments and feedback now. And we go to YouTube where Ronser comments uh, regarding the episode Death on the Diamond. This script is reused from The Shadow. Uh, the Shadow episode had Lamont and Margot investigating ball players being murdered at the ballpark, and there was a strange little clubhouse attendant that knew everybody's secrets. Margot and Lamont had a conversation about whether it was safe to eat hot dogs. 
True, the method was different, electrocution in the shadow and bullets in Bulldog Drummond. The story is almost identical. Well, thanks so much for the tip, Ron, sir. It's tough to track down uh, script reuse on a lot of the East Coast shows just because I think the survival rate is a lot more spotty. Plus, it's tough to verify who wrote what. Uh, the Bulldog Drummond scripts, of course, do not actually have information as to who wrote them. So this would be an interesting thing to check out, and I'll look into it. The weird thing about The Shadow is I think there are a lot of episodes of it that really don't fit into a detective genre. I think a lot of them lean a lot more towards supernatural or horror or adventure. And there are episodes that really do have strong detective elements. Thanks so much. Appreciate the comment and the tip, Ryan, sir. Well, now it is time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day, and I want to thank Christine. Christine has been one of our Patreon supporters since August 2020, currently supporting the podcast at the shameless level of $4 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Christine, and that will do it for today. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. And if you're enjoying the podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. We'll be back next Tuesday with another episode of Bulldog Drummond. Join us back here tomorrow for Broadway's My Beat, where... Lieutenant Clover. Good evening, sir. Well, Dr. McClure, Dr. Robbie McClure. It's a pleasure to see you. Sit down. Sit down. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lieutenant. Hey, what's the matter? What's the matter, Doctor? You look pale. Well, you? I could give you all the clinical reasons for the way I look. Now, <coughs> now, Lieutenant. Let me get you something, Doctor. I'll no, be no, right... No, no, wait, Lieutenant. Last month, there was a shooting. It, it, it's not that I want to confess to. It's the thing of, about... <coughs> You should know about last month the murder that the police never solved. Daddy, I don't want that to happen to me. I don't uh, want that... Dr. McClure. Uh, Dr. McClure. Sergeant Tartaglia. Yeah, Danny. Come here. Yeah. Well, what's the trouble, Danny? Close the door. Well, what's all... Danny, what's the matter with Dr. McClure? He's dead. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.